Robert Mueller's report on Russian collusion finally dropped this past Friday, and while I haven't had a chance to read it yet, it is something that I do intend to talk about later on on this channel. Rest assured, we will be talking about it on Tuesday when I host Mackenzie for my podcast, and I will be making a solo video about it this coming Thursday for my solo channel. But for right now, I want to take some time and talk about a couple of stories that have come up over the last week or two and talk about how the left might be doubling down on these ideas now that they don't have the Mueller report to use as an impeachment tool to try and get the president out of office. And now that they have to find another way to generically remove Donald Trump coming up in 2020 and make sure we don't get another Trump as we go forward in this country. Of course, I'm talking about the ideas of abolishing the Electoral College and drastically lowering the voting age in this country. I've talked before on this channel about the Senate being under attack, and that's because the Senate is a gigantic equalizer in our government. It's part of a great compromise that came from our government being formed, and it makes sure that the more rural residents of places like Wyoming and Montana do get their representation put into the federal government against gigantic population centers in urban states like California, New York, and Illinois. While both chambers do similar jobs, each chamber does have some separate jobs that the other one does not, and that is intentional to make sure that the majority of the power is not centered into one chamber or the other, and to try and balance the voice of the people across the country. And the Electoral College does something almost similar, but it does it in a different fashion. While the Electoral College is mostly population-based, it does have a balance built into it in the fact that the number of votes that each state sends to the Electoral College is exactly the same as the number of congresspeople total that each state sends to Washington, D.C. And what that does is it balances out some of the population disparities that go between states like Wyoming and states like California to make sure that the voices of many of the rural voters in states like Wyoming feel that they do have some representation in the process of choosing the president. In today's political atmosphere, we have three states that are often cited as being the major Democrat strongholds and the places that any president would go, ignoring all of the rest of the states, if we had a direct democracy system. 22% of the U.S. population lives in California, New York, and Illinois, and it would take about 12 reliably red states to balance that out and equal out the amount of population that's just in these three major populations and urban centers. The Electoral College is a major check that prevents what the founders feared, and that is the fact that we would have a massive centralized federal government rather than having smaller state governments, and the power of the federal government would come from major population centers like New York at the time and New York, California, and Illinois in today's time. And while the Electoral College is to blame for the fact that we don't always get the president from the popular vote, there is a gigantic balance that is built into the Electoral College system that does still make sure that the most populous states get the most pull in the Electoral College, and they do get the most say in who goes to our federal government and who represents us in the executive branch. Now the other major talking point that's being put into play by high-ranking congressional Democrats is lowering the voting age. And a lot of the punditry over on the right and even some of the people over on the left are talking about this like it is a brand new idea and something that's never been explored before. I could sit here and talk about the fact that this is something that was pushed into our minds when I was in high school, when I was 16, and when I was first starting to learn about the government. But unfortunately, that would have no citations that I could use and nothing that I could use to prove it. However, this clip from a children's show from a few years ago shows us the fact that this is an idea that's been being circulated by the mainstream media and into the minds of children for years prior to any of this happening. Current events. Somebody tell me what's going on. We should always have parks to play in. We should always look out for the little guy. We should lower the voting age. We need to treat this planet better. I don't want to go to Mars. I want to rule an Earth that has good air and good water. A good Earth for our children. Our children? 
I want 11. Split them up however you want. How do you, you want to get 11? So suddenly you guys are involved in your world. It's the only one we've got, isn't it? That's true. So what can we do to make it better? You have the vote. Why don't they let us vote? They don't trust us? I would vote to make sure everybody takes care of each other. Everybody should have food and shelter and a warm coat for the winter. I approve that message. Well, I agree with you girls. Now, lowering the voting age is a major assumption, but unfortunately it's a major assumption that does have some merit. The people who are proposing it assume the fact that 16-year-olds would overwhelmingly vote Democrat, which is probably true. There would be more votes that would be based on feelings and less that would be based on absolute research, especially given the fact that anybody who would be voting at age 16 would most likely still be in high school not have to worry about taxes, taxation, or making a good living, or making sure that they have a good job. And this actually seems to be an extension of the idea of making state-run colleges free for everybody and trying to make sure that everybody goes to a regular state-run college. Now there have been mechanisms in place for many years to try and make sure that everybody goes to a four-year state school. When I was younger, the assumption was that if you didn't go to college, you would just be flipping burgers for $5 an hour over at a McDonald's and not ever make anything out of your life. But now that people my age are coming out of college, not being able to get jobs, and being crushed by overwhelming levels of student debt, it's easy to see the generation behind us get discouraged about the idea of going to college at all. Which is part of the reason that people like Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris are suggesting making college tuition free as long as you go over to a state school. But the end goal remains the same. To keep a young eligible voter into a system of indoctrination where they can be taught how to vote and not vote based on having to pay taxes or having to go and get a good job. However, laws like this can't get passed until the left has secured the executive branch and supermajorities in both chambers of Congress. Therefore, lowering the voting age would be a first step to make sure that all of these laws can get passed. There has been a recurring theme that I've been hearing for many years across all forms of media, and that's the idea of the end of the Republican Party. And I'm not just saying that they get weakened to the point that the only representation that the GOP gets is coming from many of these more rural red states. I am talking about the absolute complete end of the GOP and all of the opposition to the progressive agenda. And ideas like abolishing the electoral college and dropping the voting age dramatically seem to feed into this idea completely. One of the things that we saw a lot of after the 2016 election was a large series of maps that showed what would happen if only this demographic or that demographic had voted. Ideas like if only millennials had voted, ideas like if only women had voted, but the overwhelming majority of them all showed the same thing. If we changed everything by demographic, and even if we changed some of the demographics, we would have an all blue country and the GOP would be over. But absolutely don't take my word for any of this. If you want to see evidence of all of this happening, take some time and go over onto social media and read the comments sections of various GOP members, especially ones who are in vulnerable areas or especially ones who are tied up in controversial topics. You will keep seeing the same comment repeating over and over. This is the end of the GOP. This is the end of the Republicans. The progressive agenda will rise again and we will have no opposition. Progressives in this country do have a very radical agenda that they want to enact, and the evidence to the fact that it's a very radical and somewhat unpalatable agenda is the fact that they do have to change the rules in order to try and get it enacted. What do you think about ending the Electoral College, and what do you think about lowering the voting age to 16? I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comment section below, and especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter with a one in place of the eye. Thanks as always for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care. You're not alone. You're all-